Hi, and welcome to Comfortable Lies. Disclaimer, the information provided by Comfortable Lies on Le Melancolique Phoenix uh, is for general information purposes only. All information on the site is provided in good faith. However, make no representation or warranty of any kind expressed or implied regarding the accuracy, adequacy, validity, reliability, availability, or completeness of any information on the site. Welcome thank back you. to Comfortable Lies with your host, Harry. Uh, today, uh, Season 3, Episode 4, Libel, Slander, and Silencing. Now, uh, before we get into uh, libel, slander, and silencing, uh, we need to discuss a different topic just a little bit. Um, and that is the idea of scientific consensus. Now, scientific consensus, um, what is it? Well, uh, it's generally when a, a large group of scientists all agree on a certain set of parameters or a certain objective reality or observable reality that which uh, they study. Uh, this is a good rule of thumb, so to speak, uh, as far as uh, trying to problem solve. Uh, having experts in the field uh, to give advice is, is generally considered a good idea. That being said, we do have to understand that there are dangers that have come with this. Scientists are not immune to bribery, political expediency, or any other uh, bias that everyone else is subject to. They are human at the end of the day. Uh, having expertise in the scientific field does not make you less human. What we saw in the last year was uh, a fight, a, a, a conflict uh, between debunking scientific exploration in a honest and truth-seeking light and blatant disregard for anyone's scientific work that did not follow uh, a certain narrative, as it were. As a disclaimer, I am not saying scientists all fall into this group. I am saying that, um, that this was something that had occurred. Um, there are were plenty of points of research that were proposed that were just immediately shot down as not possible and um, as we'll see when we get on with this season uh, about the facts that came to light year and change after the fact well uh, it turns out that not only were those viable ideas back in early 2020 but it turned out that they were actually the truth come middle 2021. So we have to look at this with a skeptical eye uh, as we do uh, anything that we're told, be it by media, politicians, our bosses, our parents. You, know, you need to really question uh, the reality that's handed to you as opposed to the reality that you discover. Uh, I think that's a fair statement. Um, one of the main arguments uh, uh, proposed against um, fighting the narrative or even uh, discussing options outside of the narrative is this idea that uh, the general public lacks the expertise that uh, the scientific community has and, and to a degree that's true. We don't have uh, uh, the tools that the scientific community has um, and, and in a, a bubble that seems like a reasonable argument if you can disregard the fact that there's a great possibility that the scientists are in fact um, biased. If you disregard the fact that the scientists are in fact human and uh, do have uh, a bias uh, politically, uh, professionally, uh, that they can be bought um, all these things that you know we do understand uh, is a possibility for every other regular human. Well, um, their their expertise still has to go under a scrutinous eye. 
the reality is it's not so much a issue of lacking expertise but lacking reliable information um, information recording during the entire episode of the 2020 pandemic was laughable at best it was information recorded to support the narrative uh, if you uh, take a look at last week's uh, post uh, about framing effect that's exactly what was going on is that all the information provided only had one solution and was only taken into account for that one solution so there's what has to be said about scientific consensus because that was what was being used to leverage the libel slander and silencing campaigns that happened shortly thereafter or well during Uh, libel and slander are generally the same thing it's just one is in written word and one is in spoken word and aside that there's really no difference it is you know uh, misrepresenting the facts mis misrepresenting the truth to um, affect your judgment on uh, a person uh, in debate terms, it's very similar to ad hominem attacks. You attack the person instead of the argument, and that uh, gives the uh, gives an audience the idea that their argument is shit because the person is shit. Um, this is considered a fallacy in debate tactics, but for some strange reason, when you uh, slap major media and politicians to it, uh, it becomes okay. Um, it's magic, I know, and uh, that's it's something that needs to be dispelled, but I don't think uh, enough people watch my podcast to really make a dent in that. So, um, how does libel and slander become a thing? Well, you can libel and slander in two ways. You can do it by fabrication, and you can do it by omission. And we saw both examples, and I am not um, a political supporter of anyone. So I want that little disclaimer out there before I get into this, because the major, uh, the mainstream media, the political class, and the scientific class all aligned against a very specific person and things that he was saying, and we will talk about the veracity of that towards the end of the uh, seasons, uh, this season, but um, um, might as well get into it. One of the most affected people by uh, li the libel and slander campaign surrounding this narrative was the then standing president, uh, Donald J. Trump. And as much as I hate this orange Cheeto, I cannot um, uh, uh, disregard what had happened. Um, in February, he was talking about something uh, called hydrochloroquine that could be used as a prophylactic or uh, as a uh, treatment, um, and that there were studies done. And as it turns out, there were. Um, there were studies done a decade and a half prior that all showed signs that what he was saying was true, which leads me to believe that this was something that was handed to him in a briefing before he said these words um, and immediately uh, the the media machine uh, uh, politicians uh, and members of the scientific community jumped on this and how did they do well they jumped on it that it was uh, irresponsible unproven not not uh, peer-reviewed um, and and all sorts of things well as it turns out, uh, the study was peer-reviewed. Uh, the uh, studies following that were peer-reviewed. Um, the one study that they were quoting uh, came from Jamaica and wasn't peer-reviewed, but there are a list of studies that even Dr. Anthony Fauci was a part of that uh, were peer-reviewed and showed that th this is a possibility that there's a possibility for a treatment and for a prophylactic. So, um, 
take that what you will. Um, this would be a live on signer by omission. They basically um, lied about all of the peer reviewed, they, they omitted all the peer reviewed uh, work done and highlighted this one study that was not peer reviewed. Uh, this other study in France that wasn't peer reviewed because, well, it literally just happened. There was no time for anyone to actually peer review it. But the doctor said, we have significant progress with this with this medication and everyone's like no it doesn't work it'll kill you why because uh, some people decided to drink some fish tank cleaner one got sick and the other one died um, little known fact fish tank cleaner does con contain hydrochloroquine but it does contain another you know cocktail of chemicals that will kill you so what these people were thinking, I don't know. The other end of this fabrication um, happened later in the year when uh, um, NIH uh, had a press conference with uh, the president at the time, and uh, um, they were discussing uh, different types of uh, biological disinfectants that could be used to uh, uh, clean uh, the the COVID-19 virus and um, um, other methods, uh, ultraviolet lighting, uh, what have you. And uh, during that press conference, uh, it went from the scientists over to the president who said, well, uh, this is very interesting. Maybe uh, Maybe we can do a study uh, on how we can implement using disinfectants within the human body, or maybe we can figure a way to use ultraviolet lighting uh, to to help um, fight this disease within the human body. Maybe not the best forum for him to say something like that, but the reaction uh, was. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is telling us to drink bleach and shove flashlights up our asses. That was everyone's takeaway. Well, that was the popular takeaway from what he had said. Never in either of these cases did the standing president of the United States ever claim that they sh that the people should uh, take their medical treatment in their own hands and away from uh, medical professionals. Um, Never did he say drink bleach. Never did he say take a fish tank cleaner and it will save you from the coronavirus. Um, these were all, in the case of printed things, libelous. In the case of uh, verbal things, slanderous uh, accusations uh, against the standing president of the United States made by mainstream media, uh, political uh, adversaries, and even some political friends, if that even exists, um, and and spread throughout social media like a fucking disease, like a virus. So, um, it's not that uh, the president was the only person, he was just the most spectacular example. Again, as far as libel and slander were concerned, there wasn't a lacking of this treatment uh, in social media with regular people versus regular people. Um, uh, the, the vicious nature of humanity really came out uh, with people versus people, you know? Um, that's the sad reality. Uh, I, I saw people who were lifelong friends that are won't talk to each other anymore because one dared question the narrative and the other one was like, oh, well, you're a Trump supporter. I mean, I've gotten that treatment myself. And, or, you don't, you don't agree with science. You don't believe in science. Like, science is something that should be believed in. Now that we've got live on slander out of the way, now let's talk about the silencing. Now, the silencing wasn't something that really uh, the standing president had to deal with until after the election, um, and that's a whole different ball of wax. And the silencing that we're really going to be talking about here is uh, 
the silencing of medical professionals, people who had earned their medical doctorates, uh, people who had earned PhDs in biological sciences uh, that were silenced because they dared to, to question Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, and uh, the CDC and the World Health Organization about the severity of the COVID-19 uh, virus once someone was infected, uh, the logic of uh, the countermeasures that the politicians uh, proposed and implemented, um, uh, the uh, disregard for scientific studies that were completed over a decade prior, uh, supporting treatments, supporting uh, uh, prophylactics, the doctors who spoke out against ventilation, and how an unintended consequence of ventilation uh, could be the death of many of the patients that they were seeking to save. Um, all of these doctors, all of their studies, all of their paperwork, all silenced. Um, and systematically, despite the, the um, efforts to uh, uh, get these papers published, get these papers peer-reviewed, went silent. No one was willing to uh, sign on to even look at these studies, specifically because of the media attention that they would get, the negative media attention that they would get if they were to even look, even consider something outside of what the media was saying. We need to really uh, examine um, the nuke in the living room because that's what it is. We as a society, we as a people that communicate with each other and uh, cooperate to survive, um, need to really examine how much information should um, a social media platform be able to disregard. Uh, and this doesn't only go uh, for, well, left versus right. Um, I am absolutely certain uh, on the right-wing social media sites, whatever they are, as well as the left-wing social media sites, whatever they are, uh, there is plenty of libel, slander, and silencing going on, and um, uh, I feel that that allows for a much less complete worldview of what's really going on. Now, granted, we do have the problem of uh, cognitive bias but uh, having all of the information available is far superior than having the information you agree with available and everything else is obviously a lie that's it's not conducive to a um, informed society that needs to make decisions in some sort of collective manner, which is the world we live in. There's the other uh, face of what silencing really does. When, um, when you silence somebody, uh, in general, um, you're assuming everybody else's idiocy. And though I do not look upon the human population with much esteem to their intelligence, um, I do not assume that they're idiots. I do not assume that they're incapable of operating outside of their own best interests. And that's what silencing assumes. It assumes that you are so incapable, you, are so incapable of operating in your own self-interest that, um, going back to last week, the truth needs to be framed in this package for you with all the options that are okay and everything else needs to be left on the outside because you are too stupid to understand what is good for you. You can see where I have a problem with that. Right? I would hope that everyone has a problem with someone saying you are too stupid to uh, be able to make decisions for yourself. Um, I, I would hope. I would hope that that phrase, uh, you find that phrase more offensive than um, 
uh, whether or not people get abortions or whether or not uh, someone decides they want to live their life as uh, a different or no gender, uh, whether or not um, someone uh, wants there to be no taxes and to be able to keep 100% of their income. I, I would hope that the assumption of idiocy by your leadership, by the media, and by the experts would, uh, would be more offensive. Uh, it doesn't seem to be, but you know, there's hope, I suppose. I don't really have it, but maybe you do. <clears throat> so in conclusion, really, um, the conclusion of this is how much of the libel, the slander, and the silencing has to do with the truth. That is always the flag it is wrapped in. Oh, we are just getting rid of the lies. We're getting rid of the misinformation. We're getting rid of uh, the things that oppose what we're saying because what we're saying is automatically the truth. All you have to do is have a healthy suspension of disbelief and disregard the reality that everyone behind all of this stuff is human and are subject to political bias, to um, financial incentive. And once you, once you get past that, the, the, the whole, they're human and they can be biased and they can be paid to give opinions that aren't necessarily true, well then, then everything all clicks together. Everything is a nice little package for you. And that is how they build this comfortable lie of scientific consensus, of, of what needs to be done, of what the truth is. They build the truth. They omit the parts of the truth that they don't necessarily like or they don't agree with, regardless of the fact that it may come out that it was true afterwards. Because they're expecting you to be idiots and forget what they said minutes later, let alone a year later. So there you go. There is the libel, the slander, and the silencing. The machinations used to engage your cognitive bias. Um, the rhyme and reason behind the framing effect. And um, how it relates to the 2020 COVID pandemic. This has been Harry. Comfortable eyes. See you next week. If you wish to support these endeavors, I do have a Shopify page. You can like, sub, comment, and possibly hit me up on either of the donation pages, which will be listed below, as well as buy merch from the Shopify page. Uh, until next week, 